This is a Cardano instructional video brought to you by Arcadia's Atoms and Tesla stake pools. Professional, reliable, and proven in the incentivized testnet. Find us online at arcadiastakepool.com and consider staking your ADA with us. Thank you. Okay, if you watched the last video, you've already downloaded and installed Daedalus. What I want to do in this video is take you through creating your first wallet for ADA, your first personal wallet inside of Daedalus. So let's open up the Daedalus program and I'll show you how to get started with interacting with Daedalus, setting up your first wallet, and then we'll move on uh, perhaps in another video to staking that ADA with a stake pool. So come on down here on your computer and you can follow along. Double click on Daedalus. I actually already have it open. Uh, and once everything gets synced up with the blockchain and you've downloaded, remember in the last video we talked about the initial startup of the program is going to take some time. I'm not showing you here the initial startup of Daedalus because it takes a few hours to go through and and download the blockchain. That's not limited by your internet bandwidth unless you have a very slow connection. Here I have enterprise grade internet connection, gigabit ethernet, but it still takes a few hours just because of the software and not really, it's not limited by uh, the, ban the, the download bandwidth, uh, at, least in my, at least in my location here. So just be prepared for that. When you first open up Daedalus, it's going to take a few hours. So just minimize it, let it work in the background, and you can download. When you start it up, it also has to go through, load that blockchain into the memory, and then make a connection with the other uh, servers out there that are working on building the chain. It'll probably connect to a stake pool, or it'll connect to one of input-outputs nodes that's serving the blocks. And... Uh, it, it'll have to sync up from there. One of the ways, if you're, if you're sitting there and you're watching the program start and it seems like it's taking a long time and you're wondering what's going on, there's actually a tool here that's quite helpful. You can go to the help menu and click on Daedalus Diagnostics. What you'll see when that comes up is it'll tell you about uh, your own computer it has information about the, the core engine inside of the wallet. Uh, it tells you here the Cardano node version 1.18.0. At the time of the recording, that is the latest version of the node. There's been some news that's come out that said in this upcoming week, there will be an update to this node version that will dramatically, it's expected to dramatically speed up the amount of time it takes to sync and connect with the and it should be it should also be ported over to the the Daedalus wallet so there'll probably be a new version of this to install within the next week which will speed up the the time it takes for a lot of these things to happen one of the things that's very nice to look at when you're first starting up is some of these Daedalus status this Daedalus status information that you have right here. So one of the things uh, it will tell you is it'll tell you how closely synced you are. I think that's about the only information you get on the startup screen if you, uh, if you don't go into the Daedalus diagnostics. It'll tell you if you're connected. One of the things that it has to do is it's got to go through and, and load that blockchain into the memory. So initially when you start up, you won't see any numbers here. It'll just have hourglasses. Once that's done, you'll see these numbers appear here. And then depending on how long you've had the node off, your last synchronized block may be in the prior epic. At that point, your node has to connect to one of the other nodes that's synced up with the blockchain and download the missing information. And that can take a few minutes. Uh, one of the other things here is you can see uh, when you see all of these green that means everything is working really well and once all of these turn green then you're connected and synced up when you first start up some of these will be red and say no 
and it just takes some time. You can watch them go from, this one says no, and it's green, but that's a good thing. You can watch when you first start this up, all of the red entries turn to green. Uh, and then once that's all done, you're ready to go. So this is very helpful. This is a great tool to be able to pop open and use, just so you know, have a little bit more information about what's going on while you're waiting. So I just wanted to point that out. This is the, the screen that you will get uh, once everything is synced up. One of the things that you have to go through when you first start up the wallet is it'll ask you some setup parameters. You can access them again here on the sidebar navigation. Um, the general ones that they ask you to set up are language, the number format. I like the decimal uh, to be represented by a period. Here in the United States, I put the month first, and I like AM, PM for the time. But you can adjust that to your liking. Uh, there's themes here. Uh, I tend to like the, the dark theme. One of the other things that you have to do when you first start up is you have to go through and accept the terms of service. If you don't, uh, they just won't let you use the wallet. So I recommend it if you have the time uh, to read through that and uh, then decide whether or not you want to accept that. But that is up to you. If you need support, there's information here about how you can check known issues. If you're going to file a support request, there's some instructions here on the information that they need to help you figure out what's going on. But in order to get started, you'll want to come up to this icon here that has a picture of a wallet, and we'll click that. And then if you haven't created a wallet, or if you need to restore a wallet, you'll have these two options. I don't have a wallet to restore. We're going to create a new wallet right now. So let's go ahead and get started with creating a new wallet. Now, when you create this wallet, something that's important to understand is this is an address in the blockchain where you will store your ADA. It doesn't exist uh, on your personal computer. If your personal computer, this unit that has this version of the wallet, gets lost or destroyed or corrupted in some way, you have not lost your ADA. The ADA, as long as there is a copy of the blockchain somewhere in the world, you have your ADA. Unless all of those copies of the blockchain get wiped out, you can still recover that ADA. But there are some important caveats uh, that you need to be aware of. The thing is, the way you access your balance and to be able to do transactions, to be able to use that ADA that is stored in the blockchain, you have to have the ability or the permission to open and use that wallet. And the way that you get that permission is through having a key to the wallet. That is your access code to the wallet. And we're going to set that up right now. You'll be given that access code when you create the wallet. If you lose that code, then your ADA is, is dead to you. You cannot access it. If this copy of the wallet that I have here on this computer is corrupted, doesn't work anymore, I can set up another version of Daedalus on another computer as long as I have this key. And this key, it's, it's, it's going to be in the form of a mnemonic that is about 24 words long. You have to write those words down. You have to save them. I recommend that you, you find a safe, uh, write it down on paper, put it in that safe, fireproof safe, whatever you want. If you want to get a safety deposit box at a bank, whatever you think is secure, I don't recommend that you store it on your computer. You can store it on uh, a secure USB key if you want to, if you don't want to have it on the paper and then take that key and put it in a safe somewhere, but don't store it just in a file on your computer, especially if your computer has internet access. That's just not secure enough for financial information. So just be aware, if you lose that key, then it's the same as losing your ADA if you lose access to this version of the wallet that's already logged in. 
if you have to recreate that wallet for whatever reason, if you don't have that key, the ADA is gone. So I'm just telling you that now because it is so important that you remember this and the wallet is going to have some warnings to that effect as well. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to create a new wallet and uh, I'm just going to enter test wallet for the name. Okay, so it's asking for a password. This will be your spending password that you have to type in anytime you want to send your ADA somewhere to another wallet, either for a transaction or to just move it into a different wallet that you own. It needs to be at least 10 characters long and it's going to judge your password and tell you whether it's weak or strong. So if you need to generate a password, you can always pop open a browser, uh, use your favorite password generator. I recommend one that's at least 15 characters long. Uh, I've gone here to passwordgenerator.net and have just copied the password that was generated there. I've taken that password and put it into a text file right here that I won't save. I'm just going to use this to copy. And I will paste this password in. It's giving me green here, so it's telling me, hey, you've done a good job. That's a strong password. You can see here that it has symbols, numbers, a mix of capitalized and lowercase letters. It doesn't form any kind of recognizable word, so that's pretty good. So we'll click Create Shelly Wallet. And now this is the recovery phase. This is the 24-word uh, mnemonic that I was telling you about. It says using your recovery phrase is the only way to recover your wallet if your computer is lost, broken, stolen, or stops working. Also, they're going to force you to confirm here that nobody can see my screen. You want to make sure no one can see that because if anyone jots down that phrase, if anyone besides you gets that phrase, they can have full access to your wallet. So whoever is the bearer of this phrase, the, the ADA in that wallet essentially belongs to them. That's their ADA. So if you are the holder of the phrase, the mnemonic, this 24 words, that ADA belongs to you. If you lose that, that ADA no longer belongs to you. If someone else steals that phrase from you, they've essentially stolen your ADA from you. So this is so important. This is not something to rush by. So make sure you click that. Do this in the privacy of your own home. So no one, I don't do this at some coffee shop uh, or any other public place. Do this in the security of your own home where you know that there's no cameras uh, watching you uh, secretively. So we'll go ahead and click continue. I know no one, no one here is watching. Uh, except for that camera that is recording this screen. Well, that's okay, this is just a test wallet. So we'll continue. And they've given you your 24 words. So you cannot just skip by this and say, oh yeah, yeah, I've written this down, because after you click this, they're going to test you. And you will have to write these words down in that order, or they'll take you back to this list and, and make you do it. You won't be able to go forward with it. So we'll just write these down. Hunt. And don't say them out loud as I was about to start doing because that's another way people can get them. I don't think it allows you to just copy them. So you actually have to type it out. But that's not a big deal. We can do that pretty quickly here. Sometimes it's kind of funny. Uh, the random words they pick almost can spell out a funny phrase at times. Okay, so let me just check that I've gotten all of those. 
yeah, okay, that looks good. So it's not, so I don't have to scroll. I'm just going to move those to the next line. And let's see what they're going to ask us to do. So I've written this down. So as I predicted, now they want us to type that back in, testing us to make sure that we've actually written this down. All right, so let's just do that. If you're doing it now, you can follow along with your set of words. And uh, you don't have to type the whole thing in. Once, you, uh, once it comes up with a suggestion that is the right word, you can just hit the space bar and it'll accept that word. So there's no rush to get through this. The main thing is that you do it right and that you have it. With 24 words, it seems very unlikely that someone would happen to guess your specific set. Plus with the spending password they'd have to break through that password if somehow they got the list of words right. So it seems very secure to me. So if you were successful in putting that list of words through as I was, it checks it and then you'll be allowed to move on to this um, acknowledgement screen. It says, I understand that the simplest way to keep my wallet recovery phrase secure is to never store it digitally or online. We were just discussing that. If I decide to use an online service such as a password manager with an encrypted database, it is my responsibility to make sure that I use it correctly. Okay, no problem. I understand this is in bold. That the only way, the only way to recover my wallet if my computer is lost, broken, stolen, or stops working is to use my wallet recovery phrase. Yes. All right. So I'll confirm that. And once you've done that, then your wallet appears. So I named it Test Wallet. If you want to change the name of that, it allows you to change that. Uh, that's easy enough to do. One of the first things that it's going to do is it's got to sync the balance and transaction history of the wallet. There, there's no balance, no transaction history in this at all. And that'll take a few minutes. You can see the progress of it moving up here. That's got to reach 100%. And then we'll be able to do stuff like move ADA in or out uh, and also use this for staking.